Well, I'm not a crook. <laughs> We are Candor Talk Live, the new progressive raw talk show discussing current hot political and social topics. The host is Dicey. www.candortalk.com. All right, sorry about that. I think we're having a little bit of technical difficulties. But hello, everybody. This is Candor Talk Live. I haven't been here for a while. This is Dicey, your host. And so much has been going on. And I finally decided that, you know what, it's time to get back on the microphone because I think we need some alternative voices now in the era of Trump. These are not good times, ladies and gentlemen. These just, just are not good times. Today I'm not going to do the two for two where, which is typically the show, we do two topics in two different segments. I'm not doing any of that today. Today is really just going to be about how to stop Donald Trump and the GOP. Now, as we are all aware, as the world is aware, as the world is out here watching and laughing at the United States of America, we elected a buffoon to become the next president of the United States, I mean, who is now allegedly the current president of the United States, somebody that I will not consider the president of the United States, because one, he refuses to act like the president of the United States. And number two, I still have difficulty with him losing the popular vote by about three million votes and still having to say that this is the person that was elected by the people. I mean, we all understand that there is an electoral college, and yes, the electoral college is what governs and dictates um, who will be the next president of the United States, and we respect that. I mean, I definitely respect that still. I understand that. But when you have somebody who loses the popular vote, by millions of votes, it's very difficult to really understand how the Electoral College could usurp that, how it could circumvent that, the will of the people. So for me, I still have a very difficult time considering this individual that's in the White House, the president. However, and you will never hear me say president and then that other person's name ever, because I just, I, I just I don't accept this situation that it is. However, being as though I do not accept this situation as it is, does not mean that I don't realize that the situation is what it is. We are living in real times, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a, a joke. Donald Trump is in the White House. He is. So, and he did, it's not like he's illegally there. We do have something called the Electoral College. It did say that this is the person that is going to be in the White House. So, yes, that is accurate. However, that doesn't mean that just because he's in the White House and that the Electoral College says that he is president, that I am somehow supposed to accept him as a president. I just will not do that. Not ever. And that is something that I will hold firm on. And anybody who's listening to the show and doesn't like it, don't listen. Because that is something I will never change. That is not my president. With all that said, regardless of how I feel about him, he is still the person that the American people, according to our electoral college, elected as president. And therefore, he has power. And believe you me, he is kicking ass with that power. Okay? He has come out literally swinging since he became president. And it is not a good thing what he has done. First, we have this executive order frenzy that he's been on. This is the guy who chastised President Obama for consistently writing and signing executive orders. Now all of a sudden, he has literally become the executive order um, um, POTUS. He doesn't go even go get advice or consent from anyone else. He just literally, him and President Bannon, I, I will say somebody is president. I, 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 I have to say it, because Steve Bannon is really the president of the United States. I hope you all do understand that. It's, it's not that other guy, right? Like, Donald Trump is not the president, okay? Steve Bannon is the president of the United States, and you can call him President Bannon because we know that that is an usurper of the White House because that individual was not elected by anyone. There's no electoral college, but somehow or another, he managed to become the president of the United States, so that's something you just have to really ask yourself, what the hell is going on? But anyway, nevertheless, 
This guy has become the executive order president of the United States. He, this is not even, he's no longer even pretending like this is, a, this is a democracy or a democratic republic, whatever you want to call it. You know, I mean, we do say we're a democratic society and all sorts of stuff. I'm not sure anymore because it's starting to look like an author, authoritarian society. This looks like fascism. This guy is just signing executive orders. He doesn't care what the American people think. He doesn't care whether, what, even his own constituents think, even the people who voted for him. I mean, if you're looking on, on Twitter and other social media formats, and even on, if you look at comments and stuff like that, even in articles and stuff like that, people that voted for him are regretting that they voted for him because this guy conned every single one of his voters. Nothing he told them. Yes, he is doing these symbolic things, these executive orders, these symbolic gestures, just because he brilliantly knows how to play his own base. He gives them a little bit of stuff. They won't know that they're getting fucked in the ass the entire time. That's exactly what he's doing right now. He gives them a few things that might make them happy, which might, might excite the base. So, for example, the Muslim ban. This Muslim ban was, was, is only because the way he looked at it, he calculated it. And he said, I don't have any business interests in those seven countries that I'm going to ban. Therefore, to use them as bait in this political warfare, which is what he used so many people as during the primary, during the general election. He used so many people. Whether he, whether he really wanted to use them or not, we don't know. But he did use a whole bunch of people for the purposes of gaining support. I'm not sure Trump believes in 80% of what he's doing. I guarantee you he doesn't. Because if you go back and listen to Trump when nothing was on the line and when nothing was at stake and we had nothing to lose... That's not what he was saying. So let's just be real here. Steve Bannon is a lot. Steve Bannon and Kellyanne Conway with her Bowling Green Massacre. These are the people who are running the government right now. It's not Donald Trump. Not, it's just not him. However, he is the face of this madness that we're seeing right now. But what he did was he threw out a little bone to his, his base. And he said, okay, look, I'll do this Muslim ban. That Muslim ban isn't going to keep one person safe. You know why it's not going to keep anyone safe? Because not one person from those countries was part of any attack on the United States soil. They just weren't. The people who were part of an attack, like Saudi Arabia, who was part of 9-11, or Afghanistan, they're not on the ban. Why? Because Donald Trump does business with those countries. The countries that actually have done damage to the United States are not on that list. Countries that have never done shit to the United States are on that list. And the reason why it was because it was not because there was a legitimate threat out there. It was not because there was actually, you know, there was there was actually some real hardcore data that there could be a threat in the, in, in the imminent future. It, there, there was none of that. It was literally just to throw something to his base for them to believe that he was legitimately going to ban the Muslims. The scary, scary Muslims. You know? And then this is just, just for those people who are listening, I just want to make sure, and this is just a side note. There are about 1.34 billion Muslims in the world. How many are committing, you know, atrocities every day? How many? Out of 1.4 billion people. So when you go and sit here and say ban Islam or um, attack an, 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 the entire religion, do you know how stupid you sound? You're literally talking about a small minority, very, very small fraction of the population that is radicalized and that is terroristic. The majority of them, vast, overwhelming majority of them, aren't involved in anything. Peaceful people, literally peaceful people, stop showing us little anecdotal stuff, snippets of, of, of terrorists um, that are out there that, are, that have committed some crime. Stop showing that and acting like that's indicative of all of Muslim, um, of, of Islam, excuse me. It just is not. It's false. But, he, but his base needed that. He used it. It was a working method during the primaries, and he just threw him a bone. Now he's created so much chaos, it's just ridiculous. And the Republicans don't even have the spine to stop him. They don't even want to go against him because they're so scared. Because they think that their base literally supports it. Their base doesn't support it. Their base does not support this. 
Trump's base supports this. The Republican base does not support this. This is there's overwhelming support now. It's over 50%. Say they're against this Muslim ban. So he throws out that. Then he throws out Mr. Executive Order President. Okay? Then he throws out <clears throat> this I'm gonna build a wall. Mexico's gonna pay for it, nonsense, whatever. Executive order. Start getting that wall built. We, the American public, are going to be paying for that damn wall. We are. And Mexico told him to go fuck himself. So no, Mexico will not be paying for that fucking wall. Like they've told him a million times. So what is he going to do? He's going to institute some kind of tariff on them? So we're going to get into a fucking trade war? What, what, I mean, what does he... Like, seriously? Is this what's going to happen to us next? Is American society? We are going to start paying for an orange? You're going to pay like $17 for an orange? This is what this guy is going to do. The people who are ready to blow up a lot of these trade deals, which I was one of those people who believes that a lot of these trades, some of these trade deals, some of the, some parts of the trade deals did damage to the American workers. And I agree. Time to, time to start renegotiating those deals. However, this wall, which is, is not going to deter <coughs> um, illegal immigration, it is not going to deter that. It is not going to deter whatever kind of minute amount of crime he claims that um, undocumented individuals um, commit in this country. It's not going to deter that. It's not going to deter people coming and overstaying their visas who flew into the country. But yeah, it's symbolic. And yeah, it creates this false sense of security to all these snowflakes in, in the Trump party. So yeah, build a wall. Sure, define your borders. Great. But why don't you use your own money, you billionaire Trump? You use your own money. I am not contributing to this stupid fucking wall. But nevertheless, he decides he's going to do this stupid fucking wall because his own stupid supporters believe that this somehow is a way of letting the Mexicans know you're done. It's a way of showing you're strong. It's a way of showing you can push people around. And it's a way of telling these brown people they got to go. We don't want you anymore. But you're going to pay for that. Which is what you don't realize, you Trump supporters. You are going to be paying for you to be able to say those things to those individuals because Trump is playing you. He was never going to be able to get Mexico to pay for it in the first place. The fact that he even had the audacity to say that Mexico should have to pay for it. As if Mexico, because we want to secure our borders, we now tell Mexico because you are Mexico, you now, and we're the United States, we tell you what you're going to have to pay for, what your economy or your country is going to have to dish out money for what your citizens are going to have to pay for because we're so much more powerful. We're more important than you. You're the brown people. I mean, just think about the racism that went into, the, the bigotry that went into him even saying that in the first place that Mexico was going to pay for it. And all these bunch of racists and white supremacists that follow him, they loved it because they just love telling the brown and the blacks, you know, you got to go and we can dominate you and we'll tell you what to do. You work for us, be our slaves. They just love it. But the problem is when the Browns and the Blacks tell you to go fuck yourself, now you got to go back to your people and tell them, oh, I'm sorry, actually, you're going to be building that bitch-ass wall. You're going to be the one paying for that stupid fucking wall. You will be. Now, mind you, while he's doing all this craziness, he's creating tension between us, our Mexican alliance, and the United States. He didn't just do that with Mexico. He also did that with Australia. And he's tweeting about it and, and getting angry at different countries. He hung up on the Australian prime ministers, what they claim in the media. I mean, this guy has gone on a rampage. He signed something today that says he's going to you know, try to modify the regulations on Dodd-Frank. I mean, this guy has gone completely fucking rogue. Okay? This guy is not a president. And what I've realized is that we do not have the GOP as a real governing body of people. These are not real people anymore. These are all wrecking balls. They want to blow up the fucking world. They want to kill everybody, and they don't care. As long as, at the end of the day, a small portion of them can survive in their bunkers longer than Hitler. They don't care about the rest of us. This has never been about the rest of us. This has always been about their own beneficiaries. Trump is only looking out for the richest people amongst us. He doesn't give two fucks about you because he's not really as rich as these people he's bringing in. But he wants to be as rich as these people he's bringing in. So he's bringing them in, and they're going to help him make more money. And so at the end of the day, that's why you have Betsy DeVos and all these other people. That's why he's bringing those motherfuckers in. It's not because 
These are the best and the brightest. He's saying they know how to make money, so now they're going to help you make it. That's not what the fuck he's doing. He's doing this because they're going to help him make money. And your dumb ass is going to get fucked over because you voted for him. The reality is we don't have the Democrats. The Democrats have no power, right? They have these little, they can have these, these little delay tactics and they can, you know, um, you know, help fight some of these appointments and whatever, but they don't have any power anymore. The Democratic Party is dead in terms of power. They have no control over anything. There's nothing they can actually stop legitimately. They just don't have any power in the left. Well, one group that does have power left are the American people. This was always our country. This is not their country. We can get rid of them when we want to get rid of them. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously, when there are elections. But there are ways of also getting rid of them other ways, you know, um, such as getting Trump impeached. But I'm not even going to get into impeachment. Impeachment is not for today's um, discussion. I don't. I want him to be impeached, but that is not what today's discussion is about. Today's discussion, actually... I wanted to, all that I just talked about was to preface why I think it's important to talk about how you need to handle Trump. Because if you hear all the things I'm just saying that he just, he has done. And the damage this man has done already to this country. Our relationships with Mexico, our relationship with Canada, our relationship with uh, Australia, I mean our relationship with China. This guy is literally dismantling all of what has taken hundreds of years for the United States to build. This guy is dismantling literally in less than two weeks. So it is time for people to start really realizing that <clears throat> the protests and everything have to continue. They must continue. Those are very, very important. The resistance is mandatory. The civil rights movement did not start and end in two weeks. It lasted years before real change was ever made. So the way people have to start looking at Donald Trump's presidency is the way you kind of looked at the civil rights movement. I think the protests are mandatory, the sit-ins, the layouts, all that stuff are important. Because even though Donald Trump is a di- dictator, there are still other people in the government who are getting becoming affected by the things that he's doing. And there are a lot of people who are not comfortable that work for him, that are not comfortable with what he's doing. And then eventually can, can force him to do certain things. And if you notice, certain things have started to change a little bit because of certain pressure. Um... You know, there have been some good signs. The ACLU, if you have not donated to the ACLU, get your ass over there and donate to the ACLU. It is mandatory that you donate to the ACLU. But I honestly believe that there are a lot of other things that we need. There's another, excuse me, not a lot of other things, but there's another strategy to handle Trump that I think is much more, is going to be necessary, not much more effective. I think that the protests are always necessary. The resistance is always necessary. But there's also another angle that I think is very, very necessary. And that's what I'm going to talk about when I come back from the break. Stay with us. Are you guys ready? It's the two for two. Yeah, the two for two. Topic one starts right now. that our third molars, commonly referred to as wisdom teeth, often cause trouble in modern humans because our mouths are smaller than our supposed evolutionary ancestors. However, impacted wisdom teeth don't afflict all ethnic groups. Numerous people groups today have plenty of room in their jaws to accommodate their third molars. Modern dental research has shown that diet is a major factor in jaw development. In non-technological cultures, impacted wisdom teeth are almost unknown. Their tougher diet exercises their jaw muscles more, and this helps their jaws develop properly. The tougher diet also results in tooth wear, and the normal compensation for this wear involves the gradual migration of teeth towards the front of the mouth, thus creating more room for the third molars. However, the modern diet of soft, processed foods does not promote proper jaw development, which can lead to impacted wisdom teeth. So, impacted wisdom teeth do not support evolutionary storytelling. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. Preview. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for staying with us, staying with me, shall I say. Um, and I told you guys before the break that I was going to talk about um, what I think is actually um, the re- a- a- another strategy that has to be um, implemented in order to stop the GOP and Donald Trump. Look, the reality is there is a midterm election in November, roughly November 2018. That is about a year, a little bit over a year and a half. The truth is, in 2018, and I'm going to verify this real quickly, in 2018 midterm election, um, midterm elections, okay, so... Okay, and it says here, and this is just according to Wikipedia, and I, you know, they could be wrong, that the 2018 United States elections will mostly be held on Tuesday, November 6, 2018. These midterm elections will take place in the middle of Republican presidential Donald Guy's term. All 435 seats in the United States House of Representatives and 33 of the 100 seats in the United States Senate Senate will be contested, which means we could entirely change the entire House of Representatives in 2018 and change 30, okay, look, 33 seats, but obviously some of those seats would be Democratic seats, but we have, let's see, for the Democrats, how many seats are up for the Democrats in the 2018 midterm election? Uh, Let's see. Let's see, United States, the Senate elections for 2018. Okay. Let's see, so we have 23 Democratic seats, I think, are up in 2018, and eight Republicans. Now, if we were to flip eight of those seats in 20. Uh, 18. Right now, we have 46. They have 52. We flip eight seats. Then we go to 54. They go to 40. We go to 54, and they go to 46. Right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So if we could take eight of those seats, and 2018, which I'm not saying we're going to take all, but if we can take, let's say we take five, we go up to a majority at that time. Majority will be at 51, which will be a majority, right? We are not going to probably be able to get do better than that, but if we can get to 51 seats, we are the majority, Democratic Party. And the reason why I say Democratic Party is because I'm hoping that it's going to be the Progressive Party by the time 2018 comes around. However, we are better off with a Democratic, the Democrats running the government than with what this authoritarian, totalitarian, tyrannical, you know, Trump administration is doing right now. We are better off with the Democrats. We, we, can, we can figure it out, but we are better off with the Democrats. So if we can flip those, that's great. And what we do need, again, in the uh, House of Representatives, all 435 seats are up. So what does that mean? All 435 seats are up. Right now, you need 218 seats to be the majority. We went up. We need 24 seats, basically, right now, to be the majority. If in 2018 we can get 24 seats, we will be back to being the majority. And we can undo the stuff that Donald Trump is doing right now. So what is my advice to everybody that's going on that, that right now? My advice is, look, continue to protest, continue to sit in. But what Martin Luther King did that was brilliant is that he actually came up with an agenda that could effectuate actual change by not only protesting, sitting in and marching, but actually getting actual action done. So by also getting the Civil Rights Act passed, pushing forward legislation that could actually make substantial change and differences in people's actual lives. That's what we need right now is we need to be mobilizing so that we can actually make substantial change. You are not going to be able to make substantial change 
by just protesting this man. This man believes that he owns the United States of America, that he can do whatever he wants to the United States of America. He is not concerned in any possible way about listening to the words of his constituents or or listening to his own people. He's not concerned about that. He's concerned about dominating and controlling and overpowering and, and, and just manipulating and owning everything. He's greedy. This is not somebody that is just going to respond to protests. What this person needs to be able to respond to is power. And power comes from Congress. And we don't have a, a Congress with a spine right now. But we can get a Congress with a spine. We just have to wait it out. So this is what I advise people to do. Look, pick and choose what you're going to protest. We don't need to protest everything he does because people are right. There is something called protest fatigue. And that's when you're just protesting every single thing that can happen. That's not really what the civil rights movement did. The civil rights movement found a way to protest things in an organized and meaningful way. It wasn't like we're just going to protest every single day. Like, for example, boycotting the buses. Okay, you want us to sit at the back of the bus? We're done. We're not going to even ride the bus anymore. We'll walk. We'll, we'll, we'll walk. And you just keep walking every day. And then sooner or later, you know what? Honestly, it's good. It's healthy to continue to walk every day. So people just took, started walking or catching rides from, from different people. That's what people started to do. So the way I look at it, and, and what happened with that, with that, with that protest, it was organized and there was an agenda. People didn't become fatigued. It became part of normal daily life. It didn't, it didn't stop them from being able to go to work. It didn't stop them from being productive. It just made them, empowered them. You want to feel empowered? The empowerment comes from, from, one, boycotting those businesses. Look what happened to Uber. Boycotting those businesses that even dare support this authoritarianism. Boycott them all. Money talks. Bullshit walks. When people start to see their pockets are affected, they start to change. Uber CEO walked off the advisory council, Donald Trump, amidst the backlash that he got when people just started deleting Uber applications in mass numbers. Because of what, how Uber interfered with the um, Muslim ban protest, Mo, uh, the, the, the CEO walked, even though he could have had his his hand at the, his body at the table, the highest and most powerful person in the world, he walked. Nordstrom is no longer going to carry Ivanka Trump's um, products anymore. You know why? Because Grab Your Wallet campaign said, you know what? Okay, do you want to support this bullshit? All right, we just won't. We just won't support you anymore. And if you think that's the beginning of of that's just the end, excuse me, of all the companies that are going to be doing that, that's just the beginning. There's so many places that are going to say, "Nope, we're out. We're done. We're not supporting the Trumps." You think Trumps hotels have taken a beating? The only way Trumps hotels are going to do any better is when you know foreign diplomats or whatever want to stay there in order to get favor from Donald Trump. But for the most part, his hotels are taking a beating. So what I the way I the what the the strategy that I see right now that I think is going to work is this. It's multifold. First, boycott all the businesses that support Donald Trump. You can protest in the streets all day. It's very important, but protests have to be strategic. The best kind of protest is to boycott the businesses. The economic boycott is the most powerful type of boycotting because that is what makes people respond. When you are not making money and you can't pay your bills and you start to see your profits draining, you will change. So the first thing people need to do is focus on boycotting those businesses. Go to the Grab Your Wallet campaign and look at all those businesses that have supported Donald Trump and decide on which businesses you are going to boycott. But it's much more effective if we all unilaterally, I mean, excuse me, universally agree on a particular place to boycott. Because the more we do that, the more people will resist. Whether they supported him before or not, they will resist. <clears throat> the second thing is, after boycotting the economic boycott is the plan for candidates for the 2018 election. That has to start today. The candidates that are going to run in the 2018 election and also those Democratic candidates that we need to replace, those spineless Democrats that need to go, that have ruined the Democratic Party, they all have to go. 2018 is time to clean clean house. Clean out, clean out the Republican side. Mitch McConnell has to go. Paul Ryan has to go. Anybody that didn't have the balls or the spine to stand up to Donald Trump has to go. 
They just cannot be in government anymore. They're not good for, for the United States. They're not good for our reputation around the world. They're just not good for, for humanity in general. They have to go. So right now is time to mobilize if you are a progressive. If you're not a progressive... I don't even give a damn if you're a progressive. If you are, if you're, if, if you're a republic, if you're a human that is going to be voting in the 2018 midterms, it is time for you to join a, a movement in which we start putting up candidates that people can respect enough to vote for, and that can help us clean house in Congress. We need to clean it up. Trump is not going to clean it up. Trump is is not draining the swamp. He is literally filling the swamp up with more corruption. He's letting go of regulations. He, I mean, this guy is going to make this country so much worse off. We are headed for a recession very soon. This guy is also going to lead us into war. So there's a lot of problems we have right now, and we don't have the Democrats who will fight. They're scared. So we need to get rid of spineless people. They have to go. So right now is the time to start working with, with progressive movements, with, with future candidates, Start working with those people right now, putting that together in your own state. I don't care. And if you're in a red state, you need to start mobilizing right this second. Stop listening to what I'm saying and go and mobilize right now. Because we need to make sure that we get all these people out of government. They all have to go. That rep Stephen King from Iowa, you got to go. You're so racist. You got to go. Um, uh, what's it called? The CBC, the Congressional Black Caucus, a lot of you guys, you got to go. All those Democrats that don't have any black uh, chiefs of chief of staffs or any Latino chief of staffs or any minority chief of staffs, they got to go. They're not about the the in- inclusivity of, of everybody else. Those people who've been selling out the Heidi Hyde camps of the world, she's got to go. She should run as a Republican, you know. She should run, run as a Republican. So for me, as far as I'm concerned, th- th- we need to clean out Congress. But the only way to do that is we have to come up with our own candidates. 435 seats are available in 2018. And the third thing that I would say is let Trump implode. You can't protest him on every single fucking thing he does. That will definitely, like I said earlier, will lead to fatigue. You cannot protest. Let him do a lot of this madness. Unless it's going to affect, like the Muslim ban, yeah, you got to go protest. If you don't protest, you're not human. <clears throat> but to be caught up every single day with what the media is trying to tell you, Trump did this today, Trump did that today, and every day you're enraged, that is not good for your health, one. Number two, you cannot stop it. It is terrible to be in a helpless situation. And number three, this is just going to sink Trump more and more and more. Let him get become the most hated person so he can be impeached. But if we give him any power by going and rioting and blurring down stuff and stuff, stuff like that, this just gives him more, more authority to do some of this madness and craziness that he wants to do. This is a madman that's sitting in the wife. A madman. This is not a normal human being. This is a person that should have been tested before they even had to step foot in the White House. This is a person that has the nuclear codes. This is somebody who could blow up the entire world. This is a, a, a psychotic person in the White House. So let his psychosis and craziness just manifest. It is, anyway. The media is trying to keep you engaged every single second on every single thing he does. And I found myself also doing that. And I realized, I don't care about everything he does minute to minute. I don't give a shit if he says something every, you know, like every five seconds what he did. All this airtime and free airtime that you're giving him, it's not helping anything. Let him implode. Stop. Take a deep breath. Sit back, relax, and come up with a real strategy that can stop this guy. You know you can stop him? We start the Democrats go back and they dominate the House. They dominate the Senate. Then we go and just start reversing all the shit he did. Reverse every fucking thing he ever did. Ever. Go every single every single thing Congress you bring, every single one of the executive orders bring it right before the Congress to determine whether or not. He overstepped his bounds. But just let him do some of these things for now. Let him do it. Dot Frank, I mean, good luck with that. Let him do some of these things. Them getting you caught up in every crazy thing he's doing is what he wants you to be doing. It's to be caught up in every maniacal, tyrannical, psychotic thing he does. He wants you to. He feeds and lives off of the attention. Let him do it. 
the best way to take away power from someone as psychotic as Trump is to stop giving him any attention. So there, there are three things. This is the best way to beat the GOP. I'm telling you right now, this is how you're going to beat them. One, you need to po- you do need to po- boycott and protest. There are two types of protests. There's the actual street marching where you march to the streets and you, you shut down the roads and you shut down because that hurts businesses. It enrages people. It shows the amount of frustration of the people. It has, it definitely has it, its place in this whole resistance. But there's a very, much more important one because the people with the power to make things change, like uh, Ubers and people like that, the CEO of Uber, is the economic boycott. So the, the protests and the boycott, that's one. You have to do those. Figure out the places you're going to, to, to bo- economically boycott. Look at um, Grab Your Wallet campaign on Twitter. Go check them out. Grab your wallet. You know, stop spending the money on these places that are supporting this 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 megalomaniac in in in, in the White House. The second thing you need to do is start getting ready for the 2018 election. That is the most important thing you can possibly do for yourself right now because all of this means nothing if this man is able to survive for four years as the as the president of the United States. When I, when I mean survive, I don't mean live. I mean this man is able to keep his job as the president of the United States. All of this, the resisting, the protesting means nothing if this maniac is allowed to stay in the White House for four years. He needs to be impeached. And the only way you're going to get him impeached is if you have the House of Representatives believing he should be impeached and enough people in the House of Representatives to bring that. And I don't give a damn if, it, if the Democrats don't have a backbone. They know they'll never get elected again if they don't. So the people who are going to be pushing for it, the people who are saying we're going to remove Donald Trump from ruining the United States around the world. Other countries don't even take us seriously anymore, guys. They don't. They've all decided that they're just going to, they're just going to go ahead and move forward. China's going ahead and meeting with Australia. They're going to work on their own new trade agreements. They're just going to move on without the United States. We are going to be the country that's left behind. But this doesn't matter to any of the Trumpers. It matters to me. So we have to realize that 18, in 18 months or whatever it is, 18, 20 months or whatever, this guy is likely going to see a real awakening if the American people do what I am telling you to do right now. This is how you stop the GOP. And look, mobilizing a voting campaign now. And stop listening to the mainstream media. He's going to tell you, oh, this is, the, the, this is how many people believe this and they believe that. No, until people go out and vote and they go and take actual action, you don't know who believes what. So I'm going to take a real quick break. Oh, and the third thing, like I said, I have to give you the last one. The third thing is let Trump implode. Every fucking thing he does does not deserve your attention. As a matter of fact, start to ignore this guy. Ignore him. Ignore him. Make him so fucking irrelevant. Because good press, bad press, is, is as long as you're talking about him, is all he cares about. Ignore him. Talk about Bannon. I just can't stand what Bannon is doing. Just ignore Trump. Don't even discuss him anymore. Let him implode. Let him lose it. And then maybe the GOP will grow a spine. Let the GOP go crazy. Let them go completely buck. They've got it all now. Now it's all in their hands. You can't blame us. When you burn this bitch down, don't blame the Democrats. You can't blame us liberals and progressives because we didn't do this. You did it. This is what you wanted, right? You wanted full control. Okay, go ahead. Because we're already seeing how, what it looks like for, for Republican governance, Right? World relations are just in, in, in complete and total chaos. The country is up in uproar. But congratulations to the, to the Republicans. This is what you wanted. Congratulations. Let them have it. Stop fighting Trump on every single fucking thing that he ever does. Stop fighting them on every fucking thing they ever do. They don't care what you say. You can resist all you want to. They, look what they did with the gun. The, the rolling back regulations on mentally, you know, challenged individuals from buying guns. So, look, they don't care about mental health. They don't care about any of this. So, you are wasting your time. Literally. Let them just do it. Let them do it. Just let them do it. You're not going to stop them. There's no stopping them. Let the Democrats in Congress do what their job and do their best to stop these things from happening. You're not going to stop them. So, stop concerning yourself every single day on every single thing they do and focus on really being able to stop them. Stop them from ever seeing office ever again after what they just did to the American people here. That's what you need to do. And that's what you need to start focusing on. Focus your resistance on those things that are going to hurt. That are going to hurt. And if you don't do that, 
You're wasting your time. Because all that's going to happen is you just made a lot of noise and no progress. I'm about to take a break. We'll be right back. On depression, a young man said, I think some people may have an inability to cope, and maybe this might sound a bit extreme, but that might be Darwinian theory. The Darwin theory of survival of the fittest. Maybe some of us aren't meant to survive, maybe some of us are meant to kill ourselves. Now, why did this young man think that human life has such little value? Perhaps he'd heard people like Oxford professor Peter Atkins, who said, We are just a bit of slime on the planet. Likewise, psychologist Susan Blackmore said, If you really think about evolution and why we human beings are here, you have to come to the conclusion that we're here for absolutely no reason at all. What a stark contrast to the words of Jesus, who said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for staying with us to the break. And anyway, the show is about to end in a few minutes. So I just want to do a real quick recap on the things that I told you guys before the break, what I think you need to do. We have a maniac in the White House. We have a maniac that's assisting who is really the president, which is President um, Bannon. We have another crazy lady in there named Kellyanne Conway. And then we have the, the, the completely spineless GOP who are also a bunch of mad people, too. So what I think we need to do now as an American public is, one, boycott protests. Get ready for 2018 midterm elections. And let Trump implode. Do not protest everything he does. Also, ignore Trump as much as you possibly can. Stop tweeting about him. Stop talking about him. Talk about other things in America. That's going to make him so angry, the fact that he's not getting the attention. And when you do talk about him ever... Let it be because you have boycotted or you protested him or you're calling attention to something that he did. Maybe that was, you know, really, really bad. But other than that, don't give him the airtime. Don't watch these news networks that cover him 24-7. Stop watching. They're just making you more and more depressed. They're not trying to come up with any resolutions. They're not telling you these things because they're going to do anything about it. They're just telling you these things so you can be much more, much more pissed off and then they can get you to keep watching every single day. And they can throw all this propaganda and bullshit at you all the time. And that it just keeps you consumed and helps them make money. There's nothing you're gaining every day by hearing about how your whole country is going to shit. There's nothing you're going to learn or gain from doing that. So, I am back. I am going to be speaking out the rest of the way. I refuse to back down and I refuse to let this tyrant continue to do what he's doing to the American public. It is shameful. So Candor Talk is going to be loud and making noise, but we're also going to be getting involved in the community, trying to do things to make sure that we can change what's going on. We are part of the boycott. So we were also the same people boycotting Uber. We boycotted um, L.L. Bean, boycott Nordstrom, everything. Just going to keep boycotting. And until people realize we're not playing around anymore. And in addition to that, we will also be protesting and we will be speaking out, but we will also make sure we watch Trump implodes. So till next time, it's going to be a next time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Have a good one. Good Friday party. Enjoy yourself. Fuck Trump. <laughs>